Get yourself a hydro flask. I'm saving you from the experience of the heat of the sun burning your face and burning your insides. What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Summertime is here in Phoenix, Arizona. And as I shoot this video, we are actually at 112 degrees. Now, I've been getting a lot of questions of people who ask me like, Victor, how do you survive these Arizona summers and these heat waves? Well, in today's video, I'm going to break down exactly how you can survive these summers, some tips that I learned from moving from a different state to Arizona because it is most definitely hot during the summertime. And I want to bring value to you in case you are relocating to Arizona or moving into Arizona. These tips are going to help you so you don't come here to the desert, be stranded on the side of the road, or your AC goes out in your house and you are burning up when you're in your vehicle or in your house. So let's get right into the value in this video about how to survive the Phoenix summers, the heat waves, because we are coming in hot. What is up everybody? My name is Victor Huerta, a local real estate agent and investor for 14 years already here in Arizona. And I need you to do me a favor, smash that subscribe button and that bell so you can get notified once I drop the latest video. I mean, I am just bringing you videos just like this one uh, the summertime here in Phoenix, Arizona, giving you some tips and value, but also some home buyer tips and some home seller tips when you're thinking about buying, selling, or investing in some real estate. Now, if you're moving to Arizona or relocating to Arizona because you know the job growth is so crazy here, people are moving in, we have a lot of migration coming into Phoenix, this is the channel you want to subscribe to and turn on those notifications because I'm just bringing you nothing but value about real estate, living in Arizona, and the housing market update. So with that being said, let's drop this video and this value on how to survive these Phoenix summers and these heat waves here in Arizona because today, unfortunately, it is a hot one and it is gonna be 112 to 113. So let's give you some really great tips right now. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so the first tip I got for you on how to survive these Phoenix summers and these heat waves is H2O, water, water and water now let me show you something these water bottles right here they're okay but they will not last 15 minutes in this heat wave because if you're driving in your car and you got that thing sitting around if you don't consume all of this water by the time you go to target or the grocery store or to walgreens or stop to put gas this thing is going to be hot so the one thing i can recommend to you is get yourself a hydro flask something that's gonna, you put ice in it, that'll actually have water contained cool, very cold for about 24 to 48 hours. You can stop at the quick trip, you can stop at the Pickwick, you can stop at your favorite gas station, fill this up with water because you're going to need it. Especially if you're driving around in the summertime, wherever you go, they come with a little handle here. You can carry it. All my kids have it. Uh, we all have a hydro flask. We actually have two sets just in case we lose one or one breaks. We have one set up as a, as a backup, but most definitely you don't want this. Okay. This is cool for about 15 minutes. If you're going to drink it right away and toss it, don't leave this in your car. It will not help. You need a hydro flask. So if you're moving or relocating to Arizona, get yourself a hydro flask. I'm saving you from the experience of the heat of the sun, burning your face and burning your insides. And another tip on why I like to have hydro flask is I like coffee. In the summertime, I like iced coffee. And if you have a regular coffee cup at the Starbucks or a local coffee shop that I, that I like to go to is I have them put my coffee in this one and then I carry my, oops, hit the microphone. The other one is the same. It's actually the same. It's just, I put a red tape around it on the top. So I know that one's water, one's coffee. And that's how I label it. I have one for my iced coffee and then I have the other one for my water bottle. So. I know you're like, man, that's a lot, Victor. But you know what? I like to consume my coffee very, very slowly. In the summertime, I like iced coffee. So that's why you need a hydro flask because this thing, well, I can leave it in my truck, in my vehicle, wherever I go, and it'll stay cold for 20, for 48 hours. If you have your coffee, iced coffee, <laughs> you leave it in your vehicle, 
it's gonna taste hot and soupy so that's just a tip from me to you if you're moving to phoenix arizona relocating to phoenix arizona and how to survive these summer months and this heat wave all right ladies and gentlemen the next tip is very very important i i can't tell you how important this is is your air conditioner in your vehicle you must get that tuned up okay by april okay i would say march and april to get it tuned up because come may it gets a little warm and then june you are hitting the summer and july is the hottest month here followed up by august so if you are in your vehicle i get mine checked every year just a little tune up to make sure i got that free on it's gonna blow cold because you don't want to be driving around in the summertime and your ac breaks especially in the situation that we are in now with supply chain issues just trying to get some parts for your ac it's gonna be brutal and i know you don't want to be driving around with that hot air blowing in your face you want the cool air blowing in your face so make sure if you're moving or relocating to arizona important tip make sure your ac is going to work and get you through the entire summer you don't need the heater you need the ac let me take a drink of my water from my hydro flask <sighs> nice and cold baby nice and cold <laughs> so the next tip that i got for you we're gonna stay with the ac here folks you must you must get your AC tuned up in your house. Just like your vehicle, make sure you're doing the right maintenance each year because if that sucker goes out, your house is gonna be a sauna in about an hour to two hours. It is gonna be hot. Another thing to do is check the insulation in your attic. Right now you can do the spray foam insulation. It helps a lot. Dual pane windows, sealing any cracks, making sure no air leaks out. But the number one thing I can tell you, my friends, if you're moving to Arizona, relocating to Arizona, and to survive these brutal, I mean, brutal summer months, like today, 112, 113, get your AC checked. Use your home warranty. Call a technician. Get it done in February, uh, March, or April, because come May, it gets a little hot. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to roll right into the next tip, which is your car battery. We're back to your vehicle. Now, I made the mistake. I drive a Tacoma. I go to the woods. I use my battery a lot. I use a backup battery to put lights when we go camping, etc. But one camping trip, I forgot to do the backup battery. So I came back into town about a month later. I'm at the grocery store and I pull my groceries out of the store. I'm packing them in my truck. Okay, and then all of a sudden you go. You already know what it is. It's a dead battery. Now, if you can afford those dry cell batteries, buy one for goodness sake. Just to invest into a good battery. Okay, I had an acid battery back in the day, and that thing just was bowling out from the sun all the acid i forgot to check it that's my bad you don't want to be at the grocery store with your groceries in the truck in your vehicle your battery doesn't start you're cooking your eggs and your milk whatever you're spoiling all your meats in the back of your truck or in your vehicle and your battery is dead so each year make sure you check your battery the acid batteries are okay here but you're gonna have to replace them every two to three years because the heat just kills them so I tell you, highly advise you to invest in a dry cell battery, my friends. It is a lifesaver. And from a pro tip like me, just check your battery each year. You don't want to be stranded at the fries with your groceries cooking in your truck. It's pretty embarrassing. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So what I do love about living in Arizona, especially surviving the Phoenix summers and these heat waves in the summertime here in Phoenix, is you can go about two to three hours away and get into some cooler weather. I mean, you can go to Flagstaff, Arizona. We have snow up there in the winter time. You can go out there and go snowboarding. Uh, you can go to the lakes, you can go fishing. And just thinking about getting out of the heat down here in Arizona, it's amazing. Oh. You just change your elevation a little bit, 10 degrees, 
it feels so much better. And you're like, well, 10 degrees, 10 degrees is not a lot, Victor. When you're in 112 and you can go up to go out to 90 or 80 degree weather, it is excellent. And then you can be outside, you can hike, you can go to Payson, you can go to Sedona, you can go to Flagstaff, you can go to the Tonto National Forest, you can go to Colorado, you can actually head uh, the back way towards the Tonto National Forest and head to New Mexico. And there's little campsites there as well. So just getting out of the heat, you can do that within two to four hours. So small getaways with the family, do this Airbnb, VRBO, whatever it is, it is amazing that you can be in 113 degree weather like today, and then you're in 80 degree weather in about two and a half to four hours. Now, staying on this topic here is you can do staycations. Now, I have children. We didn't have a pool at one time. We finally have a pool and it's been a blessing. But a staycation is getting out of your house, your, your own house, and going to a different house. Now, what I mean is a hotel. Okay, these hotels have two, three, four pools. The kids can have fun, you can have fun, and you're not using all your AC. You're using their AC, okay? They have a lot of games, of music, bands. They have everything going on. Some hotels have slides. It is fun to get out of your own house, your own comfort zone, head out to the hotel, book a room for Friday night, Saturday, come back Sunday, the kids have fun. They get tired in the heat and the in the pool in the sun you get to hang out and drink your pina colada or your margarita and hang out with your wife or your husband and just chill and it's a great time now the one advice i give to you is pack a cooler stop at the grocery store buy some snacks some sandwich meat etc take it up to your room with a bunch of drinks a bunch of water etc so when the kids get tired in the, during the day right after 10 or 11 when that sun starts coming out and starts beating you head to the head to the room stay in the hotel there's games in the hotel etc but you can make yourself some lunch up there and then come back for the after activities around four where it opens up and it stays open to like 10 or 11 the pools so that's what I suggest because the food there is pretty expensive. You can spend 50 bucks, make yourself some sandwiches for the kids, some snacks, some water, some drinks, etc. because you're probably only going to get two hamburgers at the staycation for 50 bucks. So I'm discussing a lot of items for you as a human to survive these Phoenix summers and these heat waves here in Arizona. But you got to remember if you have a pet, we have a pet now is you gotta try to think about what are you gonna do with your pet, especially if you're not taking them to the staycation because the hotel rooms sometimes don't let you take them. Um, if you're not gonna take them with you to um, out to the forest, etc., you need to have some kind of doggy door to let them come in and out. And you gotta make sure these doggy doors don't get stuck or they don't shut by accident. There's been some that have shut, the pet gets left outside and you know what happens. You gotta make sure the pet has a lot of water. Okay, another thing is it, it kind of makes me very angry when I see people walking their pets, especially in May and June. You don't want to be walking your pets outside on the cement or the pavement because their paws are going to burn. If you're going to be walking your pets in the morning, it's still hot out there. They have these little booty covers for their for their paws. I suggest you buy them from Amazon, especially walking them here in Phoenix, Arizona. So make sure you take your pets as well because if we don't like to be outside in 113 degree weather, what makes you think your dog's gonna survive out there in 113 degree weather too? They're gonna get exhausted. They're gonna start wiggling like this and faint and, and you're gonna be, what is going on? Well, your pet's dehydrated. So make sure you take care of yourself, but also please make sure you take care of your pets and those paws. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the next tip I'm gonna give you for surviving these Phoenix summer months and these Phoenix heat waves here in the summertime is make sure you properly clothe yourself. Okay, I'm talking about a hat. Sunglasses are very important. You can use one of those lightweight uh, long sleeves uh, that you can get at Bass Pros or any sports shop. Make sure they're light. Make sure they're dry fit because you're going to be sweating, but at least it protects you. Uh, I usually use a, uh, a wet uh, neck 
uh, wrap that goes around it, drop it in some water, put it on there. And I wear a nice hat when I'm outside. Right, right now I am inside my office. It's nice and cool, AC, I'm in and out. So I just gotta, you know, you just gotta make sure how long you're gonna be outside and make sure you use the proper attire. Another thing is sunscreen. Sunscreen is good to wear, but it's not gonna last that long here in Arizona because it is just hot and it's just gonna come right out if you're in a pool. You gotta make sure you're reapplying that sunscreen at least every 45 minutes to an hour, especially for children. You gotta protect that skin, okay? Another pro tip is, this is why I told you about your vehicle. If you're going in and out of stores with your children, pack a nice little like Yeti cooler with some snacks and some water because my kids eat a lot and I'm pretty sure your kids are the same way when once you get in the vehicle, they're like, I'm hungry. And you're like, I just fed you 30 minutes ago at the house. How can you be hungry? Well, I'm hungry. So pack yourself a cooler with some snacks and some water so you can leave it in there. So when you go in and out of the stores, make sure you check your AC in your vehicle. Make sure you check your battery. Make sure you pack a cooler. Make sure you got some sunscreen and make sure your children and yourself have the right attire. I just, there's people out there who are stranded on the street and they don't have water, they don't have snacks, they don't have coolers, there's children there. And it's just sad to see that they're sweating on the freeway, the side of the freeway when the car breaks down. So make sure you pack a Yeti cooler, any kind of cooler, it doesn't have to be Yeti. Something that's gonna last just like the Hydro Flask who's gonna keep your stuff cool because you just never know what can happen. Flat tire, your car breaks down, your fan bell goes out. The sun is brutal over here, so make sure you're doing what I'm actually giving you as far as pro tips. And if you did not, well, I'm sorry, my friend. I try to warn you. I try to warn you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so the hottest months, this is how we usually rolls here in Arizona. And if you're thinking about moving to Arizona, relocating to Arizona and how to survive these summer months, this is what you're going to look at here. Is starting in May, it gets pretty warm. So you want to prep right before May. June, it gets hot. Right now, we are June 11th. It is 113 degrees, okay, in 2022, June 11, 2022. July is the hottest month, followed by August, then September. Then on October, Halloween, <laughs> we dressed up as the Incredibles. It was still hot. My kids finally realized we are never wearing costumes like that again. So then <laughs> the following year, we were all like Egyptians where we were actually not covered the entire body. October is still hot, but it gets a little cooler. Right now, my pool is 85 degrees. So we jump in, we cool off, we relax, but we usually swim in the morning till about maybe 10, 30, 11, go in, do some activities inside the house where my wife takes them while I'm working and doing some real estate business. And then we head out to the mall, we stay somewhere cool, but that's kind of what you're looking looking at as far as months is it's gonna get hot in May, July's the hottest, August, September, October starts getting a little cooler at the end of October, it's still kind of hot. And then November starts kind of like cooling off where you can actually stay outside and have some fun. So those are the hottest summer months and I get that question, I get, question, I get that question asked a lot. So that's what we're looking at as far as summers here in Arizona. So I can go on and on about pro tips about how to survive the summer heat here in Phoenix, Arizona. So if I miss something, help me out. Drop some comments below. Let's give some people some tips here. And if you've moved from a different state or relocated from a different state, what are you doing to stay cool in the summertime? I'm pretty sure a lot of people have different ideas and different tips that I missed here. I mean, I can go on for a list of 100 tips, but let's, let's roll it into the comments below and let's help these people out who are moving here or if you're living here and you found out another suggestion on how to stay cool in the summers and how to survive here in the Phoenix summers for these people who are moving into Phoenix, Arizona. Now, do me a favor. We can only grow as fast as you like, you, the audience. So do us a favor, smash that subscribe button and that bell. Turn on the notifications because we're just dropping content just like this video. And if you're thinking about buying, selling, or investing in some real estate, this is the channel you want to subscribe to because we're just bringing you guys some home buyer content, home seller content, the Phoenix real estate market updates. So you can be mindful if you're thinking about buying, selling, or investing in some real estate. All my information is below and I appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you for subscribing and we'll see you guys soon. If you have any questions, email me at victor at freeagentproperties.com. Again, that email address is victor at freeagentproperties.com. 
where we release new videos each week on home buyer tips, home seller tips, the Phoenix housing market updates, so you can be mindful when you're thinking about buying, selling, or investing in real estate. We will talk to you soon.